Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the world premiere of a new musical play, Hope is a Woman, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another delightful musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Two of the greatest journalists of the 90s were Richard Harding Davis and Williston Fish. Tonight, we're putting two of their best stories together as we bring you Hope is a Woman. So... All aboard for the Gay 90s. Charlie would waltz with the strawberry blonde and the band played on. He'd glide across the floor with the girl he adored and the band played on. But his brain was so loaded it nearly exploded. The poor girl would shake with alarm. He'd nearly leave the girl with the strawberry curls and the band played on. Is my hair the color of strawberries, Charles? Oh, better. It's the color of the sunrise. Well, the paper said it was a very gray morning. I didn't mean that, Hope. Oh, you're nice. Charlie, whirl me around again. All right. Charlie would walk with his strawberry blonde and the band played on. Glide across the floor with the girl he adored and the band played on. Charlie? Yes. But the best part is riding home in a handsome cab. After the ball is over. After the break of morn. After the dancers Dobbin liked it. <laughs> Hope, I, I have something to ask you. Yes, Charles? Well, I could come right out and say I love you, but, well, you know that already, and... Yes? Oh, golly, I get all tongue-tied, and all I can say is, well, the way they say it in the show. Tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? There are a few. Simple girls and proper too. Then tell me, pretty maiden, what these very simple girlies do. Kind sir, their manners are perfection and the opposite of mine. Then take a little walk with me and then I can see what a most particular girl should I be. I beg of you too well to let you go and flirt with those at home you well, don't mind, little girl, you'll see, I only want but it's you. It's not quite fair to them if you told 
them that you are I true. won't care a pin for your sisters if you love me. What would you say if I said I liked you well? I'd bow to you. On bended knee. On bended knee. Behind of you. Would you tell me what I ought to do to keep you all mine alone? To always be true to me. Why not me? Yes, I must love someone really, and it might as well be you. Well, actually, Charles, well, there's nobody else at home, only Daddy and his side whiskers. Oh, yes, Mr. Mutton Chops. I mean Mr. Morton. You're not afraid of him, are you, Charles? Oh, no. Well, because, you see, you have an appointment to see him at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I do. Well, you've got to ask my father's permission. And you see, I just knew you were going to propose to me tonight, so I already made the appointment for you asking. Well, I have hope. Now all I need is my faith and your father's charity. Ah, young Lounsbury. Well, come in. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Well, it's a lovely day, isn't it? I doubt, Mr. Lounsbury, if you came here to discuss the weather. No, sir. I'll come right out and say it. I love your daughter, and I want your permission to marry her. I see. I suppose I should have been better prepared to hear this, but it's one of those things which men put off, as they do making their wills. Their wills? We seem to think that our daughters will live with us always, just as we expect to live on and on ourselves until death comes and finds us unprepared. Uh, I don't mean to be gloomy, Lounsbury. Oh, no, sir. But have you ever prepared a will, young man? Well, no, sir. I, I don't have much to leave anybody. As a matter of fact, in the marriage ceremony, when I'll say, with all my worldly goods I thee endow, I'm sure somebody will say, there goes his bicycle. <laughs> but, sir, I, I'm going to work for Hope. And make her happy for the rest of our lives. Now, that's all very well, but let me ask you this. Suppose you only had 30 days to live. Would you still want to marry my daughter? Well, I... Uh... Don't you have an answer? 30 days to live? Oh, I don't know what I'd do, Mr. Morton. Oh! Oh! Well, who, who, who's that? Is that you behind the curtain, Hope? Have you been listening? Of course I was listening. Oh, now, Hope, I, uh, I, I... Don't talk to me. Father, ask this young man to leave. Immediately. Hope. Oh. oh, if he had said I want to be with her, whether it's for 30 seconds or 30 million years, I would have felt he was noble and good and, and my beloved. But, oh, now... Hope, you, you don't understand. Father, ask him what I'm supposed to understand. Uh, my daughter asks, and I quote, uh, what am I supposed to understand? Oh, Hope, it would... Just be mean for me to make you ecstatically happy for 30 days and then leave you. Make me ecstatically happy? Oh, how conceited can you be? Father, ask him to go away and forget he ever knew me. I'm asked to convey the message, go away and forget you ever knew me. Oh, Hope, Hope, why do you have to be such, such a woman? <laughs> Hello, Julian, are you there? Oh, Sam Morton at this end. Uh, oh, no, no, Doc, nobody's sick. A little heart sick, maybe. You see, I'm convinced now that my daughter's really in love with young Lounsbury. Otherwise, she couldn't hate him so much all of a sudden. I, all I want you to do is to do me a favor. Now, you're Lounsbury's family physician, aren't you? Well, I want you to get him in for a physical examination. And here's what I want you to tell him. <laughs> you should. Well, Doc, what are you looking so solemn about? Charles, my boy, I think you'd better make out your will. My will? My boy, you only have about 30 days to live. 30 days? <laughs> My will. 
I hereby bequeath my $4.85 in the Farmer's National Bank to... Oh, what can I leave anybody? I, I haven't got anything. Well, now, wait a minute, Lonsbury. Look around you. Add up everything you see and, and feel and know. And love. Well, you're a pretty wealthy guy. Yeah. There's a lot you have to leave behind. <laughs> I, Charles Lounsbury, sound in memory, sound in mind, do make this will and leave behind the greatest wealth the world can show. These things I have and love and know. The children every sunny day, the right to laugh, the right to play. Magic of the month of May, the wonder of the Milky Way. And on each starry night, no child should be alone. And so I give each child the right to choose a star. But boys the most, snow-clad hills where they can coast, ponds to skate on, golden streams, boats to sail on, pleasant dreams. Love is all I hear by device, the Find in lovers' eyes the red, red roses by the wall, the winter, summer, spring, and fall, soft caresses, summer dresses for a The power of truth To them I leave a priceless thing A lusty merry song to sing To those who are no longer youths Or lovers Or girls or boys I leave these certain special joys Something every wise man knows How good it is How rare it's worth This place we live This lovely earth. We'll return in a moment with Act Two of Hope is a woman. As we look around at the world we live in today, it is hard to imagine that many of the wonderful things that science and ingenuity have produced did not even exist a few short years ago. They operated when virtually nothing by present standards was known about metallurgy. And they had long beards when the Wright brothers flew their first plane. And when someone put a one-cylinder gasoline engine in a buggy and disposed of his horse. Yet, they are still with us. Even as we wonder what makes a transistor do what it does and stare wide-eyed at the spacesuits our airmen wear as they explore the stratosphere. 
Let us not forget that. They are still with us. They have lasted in the face of competition that couldn't even have been conceived of by the wildest of our imaginative fair forebearers a few decades back. Because of the constant improvements they have made, and because of the efficiency and economy of their operations, the railroads are still with us. And there is nothing in existence, nothing in sight, that can take their place in the future. For only the railroads are able to move anything for anybody in any quantity in any season of the year among all parts of the country. That's why the railroads remain the foundation of the nation's essential transportation system today as in the past, hauling more tons of freight, more miles, than all other forms of transportation combined. Now here is act two of the Lawrence and Lee play with music, Hope is a Woman, starring Gordon McRae as Charles Lounsbury and Dorothy Warren Schultz as Hope Morton. I walked all over town. But can you spend your last 30 days just walking? Ooh, boys and girls together. And me with nobody. Nobody to spend a lifetime with. A lifetime of 29 days. Then 28 days. On the sidewalks of New York. Every evening, I'd watch the lights of the city coming up. And I'd know that one more day had passed. Come twilight time, you begin to think of important things. Just a song at twilight. that I was married to a different girl. But strangely enough, they all looked like hope. Ladies and gentlemen, the Swedish Nightingale, Jenny Lynn. My American friends, may I sing for you my celebrated echo song? Come
somebody I wish you all to meet. My husband, Mr. Yanny Lind. Mr. Yanny Lind? No. Oh, no! <laughs> Next night, guess who I dreamed I was married to? Make way, make way for the glamorous, the unforgettable Lillian Russell. Incidentally, the man with her they call Diamond Jim because he has $4.85 in the Farmer's National Bank. 30 days with Lillian Russell. Oh, what a way to die. Diamond Jim Lounsbury, you promised me a solid gold bicycle with rubies and diamonds in the handlebars. As everybody has said, there goes his bicycle. <laughs> One more dream was enough for me. Presenting Annie Oakley. <laughs> Hey! Oh, man, what a dream. At least I know what I want now. I want hope. But golly, what'll I say to her? Please come back to me. Bring back the heart I gave so glad. I'm coming home with my heart in my hand to ask you to be with me if it's only for a few seconds. Hope! Hope, where are you? Mr. Mr. Morton! Nobody's home. I guess she's forgotten all about me. Now all I can do is go back to my walk-up flat and wait around to die. Lights on. Who's in here? Hello, Charlie. Oh. oh, Charlie, forgive me, but I just found out. It was all a bad joke about the 30 days. Father and the doctor made it up. They wanted to bring you to your senses. I'm not going to die? Well, not this month, anyhow. Oh, hope I know one thing. For 30 seconds or 30 million years, I want you. Oh, you've always said lovely things, Charles. And while I've been waiting, I've been reading something else lovely. Oh, that's my will. <laughs> we can throw that away now. Oh, no. And we're going to save it because it'll still be beautiful 99 years from now. You know the part I like the best? Oh, lovers, all I hear my device. Those who are no longer youths, 
or lovers, or girls or boys, I leave these certain special joys. Memory and sweet repose and something every wise man knows. Dorothy Warren show will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Joseph Kahn, Marvin Miller, and to our entire company. Hope is a Woman, freely based on material by Richard Harding Davis and Williston Fish, was written especially for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The music for This I Leave the World was composed by Carmen Dragon. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? America's mighty production system as we know it today would not be possible without railroads to assemble the materials used. The fertilizers and farm implements needed in agriculture, for example. The raw materials, fuel, and machinery used in industry. And not only would production on the American scale be impossible without railroads, it would also be useless without the widespread distribution and the high consumption of goods made possible by the railroads. Other forms of transportation are useful, yes, but no one of them nor all of them put together could take the place of railroads in furnishing the low-cost, continent-wide, all-season service, which is fundamental to the way we make and use things in America. Thank you, Marvin. Well, Dorothy, you were wonderful. Thank you, Gordon. I do love that gay 90s music. What period and place are we visiting next week? Well, you just give a listen. I'll be here. Good night, Gordon. Until next Monday, Doyle. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next Monday night, and the premiere of our musical version of Lorna Doon, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, your friend Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> Craig can soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Leonard Warren on NBC.